Folks, welcome once again to Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe del Valle de Popaque for the celebration of the Sunday Mass. We are in the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. My friends, coming together to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess yes, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, the heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Look upon us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Our responsorial song today is, The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, 
So far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached the Lord and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all of his property in payment of the debt. At that the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him, and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you, have, should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from the heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, I'd like to follow up on last week's Gospel, which talked about forgiveness. I mean, I'm, talking, I'm sorry, talked about loving our neighbor as ourselves, and it begins with pardoning our neighbor. One of the hardest things any of us has to, is to forgive someone who has hurt us. The famous Leo Buscaglia tells about one of his students who was jilted by her boyfriend. The young woman felt both hurt and rejected, and at the time she felt that she could never get over it. This young woman had never been so hurt in all of her life. Her pain was so intense that she was unable to study or concentrate. She tried to build new relationships but failed. Deep down though, she knew she had to forgive. As she wisely put it, I'm the one in pain, so I'm the one who's got to do something about it. She would have, she would have to forgive the young man for her own sake. Finally, she did forgive. 
No longer was she a slave to her anger, spite, hate, and hurt. As I mentioned, folks, it's hard to forgive someone who has hurt us. And yet the one thing we all have in common is that we have all been hurt by someone in our lives. In our gospel today, uh, Peter is using the number seven. And seven seemed like a good number. Indeed, seven was regarded as a biblical number. The world was created in seven days. And Peter thought he had given a sensational answer when he asked about forgiving his neighbor. Should I forgive him as many as seven times? See, the rabbis instructed persons to forgive someone only three times. And if there was a fourth time, then God would have to take care of that person. So Peter was being more than generous. He doubled the amount and add one more for good measure, as many as seven times. And Jesus answered, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. In other words, Jesus offered a new teaching on forgiveness. Jesus wants us to understand that forgiveness is an attitude, folks, which is why Jesus gives us the parable today. The Christian life is not comprised of arithmetic or just good intentions, but is filled with practical everyday acts of compassion. As difficult as it might seem, there is no limit to the amount of forgiveness we are to offer another person. And when we are able to forgive another person, healing takes place within us. The, forgi the, the king forgave the servant a, a colossal debt. And the forgiven servant ran into a fellow servant who owed him a small amount. I understand it was a hundred denarii. Note the contrast. It would take an army to transport 10,000 talents, which is what the amount was, but 100 denarii could fill easily in a person's pocket. The average worker could earn 100 denarii in only a couple of months. In contrast to the substantial amount the servant owed the king, the denarii was nothing. That's why healing comes through forgiveness, and that's why the first servant was not healed. We forgive others because God has forgiven us. That is what empowers us to forgive. We have been forgiven. A.J. Cronin, the novelist, who was also a doctor, his first assignment was to a Welsh town where he performed his first surgery on a little girl. She was suffering from a serious case of diphtheria. So Cronin did a, a tracheotomy and her condition improved but she was still in critical condition. After the operation, he told the 19-year-old nurse on duty, I'm gonna try to get some sleep. When this tube clogs up, take it out immediately and clean it, then come and get me. Well, within hours, the tube did clog up, but instead of taking it out, however, the young nurse panicked and ran to the doctor, and by the time the doctor got to the girl's bed, she was dead. He was furious. The next day, he wrote a letter recommending that this young nurse's license be revoked. He called her in and read the letter to her. The nurse, in tears, pleaded for a second chance. Cronin was unrelenting. However, her words haunted him all night. And upon awakening the next morning, he suddenly remembered that he once had offered to Christ Jesus the same exact plea, give me a second chance. The nurse was given a second chance and went on to become the superintendent of the biggest children's hospital in Great Britain. What a story. So have you ever been given a second chance, folks? Remember, there is healing and forgiveness healing of relationships, healing within the person who forgives, 
How many times are we to forgive another person? There is no limit. Forgiveness is an attitude. It is an acknowledgement that we have been forgiven by God and therefore we have been even given the grace to forgive. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us lift up to God our needs this day, that har harmony and fairness may prevail in our lives here on earth. For Pope Francis, our bishops, may our church be led in love and justice for the common good of our people and for the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the well-being of our families and for the healing of all derision and ill will, May we lean on the love God has for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the needs of God's beloved poor, for our neighbors who live on the streets, and for those who search for daily food and long-lasting righteousness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the people of Morocco and the people of Libya who have endured tremendous natural disasters this week, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the intentions of this weekend's Mass, for the repose of the soul of David Fry, Barbara Lichars, and the health of Toby Quinley, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the repose of the soul of Martin Corunda and Sister Philip Mary Riley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the repose of the soul of Guadalupita Velarde, Margaret Velarde, and Eloy Velarde, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the repose of the soul of Governor Bill Richardson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the health of Father Fernando Rubio Boitel, who had open heart surgery, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the health of my sister Pamela, who had uh, surgery as well, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Gracious and merciful God, received our bruised hearts and prayers we, we speak. Open the gates of heaven as we long for forgiveness on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, also work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the 
praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed men and women in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as in joyful celebration we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless you, Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, pronounced the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francisco, our Pope, John Charles, our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, the, with Saint Joseph, her faithful spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with Saint John Chrysostom, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your loving church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be you. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our desires may always prevail in us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to proclaim the gospel by your lives. Thanks be to God.